So, um, apologies if you can hear my children homeschooling noisily in the background. Um, so I'm going to uh, speak about what net, net zero is and what you should think about including in your plan. Um, so as you'll know, in terms of policy, and um, the Scottish Government recently published the Climate Change Plan update, and public bodies are now required to set a date for when you will achieve net zero direct emissions by 2022. Um, you're also required to set a date for indirect uh, um, targets for indirect emissions and to publish details of how your spending plans will align with delivering these targets. Um, as Matt mentioned, um, accompanying guidance on this is going to be published in April. Um, and uh, the Scottish Government will also be sending a letter to all chief executives um, regarding these requirements. Um, um, also, the College Development Network um, set up the Climate Emergency Experts Group, um, who have drafted a um, Scottish College's Statement of Commitment on the Climate Emergency. Um, so that was presented to the College Principals Meeting um, in January, and it commits to 10 actions, which include um, Scotland's colleges uh, aiming to achieve net zero by 2040 or earlier, um, embedding environmental sustainability within your institutional strategies um, and addressing the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which is fantastic. Um, also, increasingly, um, there is a push from students um, to deliver in this area. Um, so 80% are stating they would like their institutions to do more on sustainability. Um, and uh, last year, SOSUK published its carbon target league table, along with a statement of expectations um, that uh, UK universities and colleges should publicly commit to being net zero um, for 2030 um, for scope one, two and three. Um, and they would like an action plan published um, 12 months following the um, commitment. Um, they are aiming for, they are asking for these commitments to be made a year ahead of the Scottish Government. Um, so 2021. Um, so I thought it would be useful to clarify what net zero means. Um, so zero emissions is when an organization's emissions are actually zero and this can be achieved using uh, removals within your boundaries so for example if you're fortunate enough to have land you can plant trees and um, which is what the university of edinburgh is planning in their zero strategy um net zero is when you reduce your emissions as far as possible and then any residual emissions are balanced or offset with a purchased um, emissions reduction or removal. Um, and, and that is what most institutions are aiming for at this point, the ones that have made um, targets. Um, so in terms of like when you come to think about um, setting a target for your um, institution, um, consider that to meet the Scottish Government requirements, you should be net zero by 2045. Um, to be more ambitious, um, and in line with the uh, College Development Network um, statement, you would be looking at 2040. And um, some other institutions uh, that I'll talk about later have actually chosen to align with their local authorities. Glasgow and Edinburgh, for example, have chosen to be to be net zero for 2030. And um, the local authorities, so some institutions within those local authority areas, have aligned with that. Um, after you have agreed an appropriate target for your institution, then it's also important to set an interim target um, and develop an action plan with um, reduction projects to address all key sources of emissions and um, accompanying performance indicators to monitor progress. This is something that we're going to speak about in more detail after the break um, with Martin and John, as I think it's an area that we could work on as a group collaboratively. Um, it's also really important um, to define the reporting boundary in relation to any targets you set. Um, so as Matt mentioned, um, the Scottish Government is currently proposing um, that net zero targets for public bodies should cover operational emissions. Now this would be building energy, waste, water, fleet, business travel and F gases. Um, and they will confirm this in the guidance that's going to be published in April. Um, the good news for us is that the vast majority of our, our institutions are already reporting these emissions, so it's only going to be a few people that are going to need to look to um, include business travel and FGAS, um, so, so that's, that's great. 
Um, now, other potential sources of emissions to consider um, are commuting, um, home working, particularly if that's something that your institution is looking to promote and continue post COVID. Um, and also procurement now, as Matt mentioned, it's a tricky one for FE at the moment. So HE have got access to the higher education supply chain emissions tool, which has recently been updated. Now we are in um, discussions with APUC and the, um, the UK team about adapting that for the FE sector um, with uh, the relevant procurement codes. If that's something that you would be interested in, including in your reporting, or you'd like to be involved in a pilot, please get in touch and, and we'll keep you up to date on that. Um, so, and, and lastly, um, it's important to note that any targets that you set must cover all greenhouse gas emissions, so carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, um, PFCs, HFCs, SS6 and NF3. Now, because we're all doing public bodies reporting, our um, reporting includes all these because they use um, carbon dioxide equivalent emissions factors, which includes the other gases in their equivalent carbon dioxide. Um, so, but I think it's it's useful to be clear on that point in any sort of communications or strategies that you're writing. Um, so, ooh, what's happened? My screen's frozen. Wait a minute. That's it. Um, I thought to help us identify the um, the key areas um, to focus on for emissions reductions, it'd be helpful to briefly look at sector emissions for 1819. Um, so. I've admitted commuting as only one college reported that, so it was coming up as artificially small when actually it would probably be quite a sizable portion of the total footprint. Um, but so as you can see, in terms of reporting at the moment, and this would cover what the Scottish Government is proposing, uh, our targets cover, um, the majority of emissions are coming from natural gas. Um, so decarbonisation of heat should be our first priority. Um, and that obviously also covers fuel, which is coming in a third, because um, some of our institutions have got uh, heating oil uh, boilers. Um, next is electricity, which is also very significant. Um, and then that's followed by fuel and then business travel. Um, at this point, uh, so bearing in mind those key um, reduction opportunities, I'd like to suggest um, looking at the Climate Commission FE um, roadmap for colleges um, and also the new HE toolkit that's just been published. So um, the roadmap uh, splits institutions into emergency, established and leading. So it helps you to map, map your progress. Um, and it also contains reduction um, measures across the whole of college operations. So estates, travel, curriculum, for example. Um, and the measures are graded by cost and by time. So it gives you an idea um, of the resource that will be required to deliver each um, option. Um, so moving to heat decarbonisation, which I think should be our top priority as a sector. Um, if we apply the carbon management hierarchy, we should first be looking at reducing demand and um, improving energy efficiency. And I know there's been a lot of work um, to date on that across the sector. Um, next, we need to think about replacing high carbon energy with low carbon energy. Um, and I have linked here to a lot of great examples that are already active in the college. I'll share these slides with everyone after the meeting so you can then um, flick through the case studies for further detail um, on any projects that might be of interest for your institution. Um, I'm sure many of you will be aware about the ground source heat pumps that are in place in the low carbon teaching annex at South Lanarkshire College, um, the wastewater heat recovery um, system at Borders College. There's also several successful biomass systems and um, combined heat and power systems in the sector, like the ones at QMU and um, Strathclyde. Um, and more low carbon heat networks are coming online via the um, Scottish Government's Low Carbon Infrastructure Transition Programme, um, like uh, the Queen's Key District Heating Network and Clyde Bank, which I know that um, West College of Scotland are considering linking up to. Um, I was also going to mention hydrogen, and I've linked here to a Scottish policy note on that, but um, I was on the CCC webinar yesterday morning and the panel said that really hydrogen should only be it's so complex and expensive at this point that it should only be considered for areas that uh, it's not possible to electrify. So I don't really think that's something that we need to be thinking about at the moment. Um, now, I do appreciate, as Matt's mentioned earlier, that finance is a huge barrier to projects of this 
feel. Um, and that's something that we're going to discuss after the break to see if there's we can agree a sector approach perhaps to take to the SFC. Um, you know, we, we've already um, mentioned in the consultation that Matt uh, brought up earlier on the climate change plan that there is, there's more money coming from the Scottish Government to decarbonise public sector buildings and we've asked for assurance that that is going to be accessible to colleges because I know that a lot of the funds at the moment are not. Um, so yeah, that's something I think it's really important we can chat about that in more detail um, after the break. Um, so moving on to electricity, so this is a bit more complicated. Um, obviously, at the minute, it's our second largest source of emissions. Um, and again, we should first be focusing on reducing demand and energy efficiency, which I know there's been a lot of fantastic work going on there. Um, in terms of switching to lower carbon sources, it's quite complicated. So this graph here um, projects the carbon intensity of the UK electricity grid down to 2035. So at the minute, it's 230 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. It's going to be less than a quarter of that um, by 2035. Um, and actually in Scotland at the moment, um, it's yeah, it, uh, 2016, it was 54 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. I think I can find a more recent figure, but I know that they were even for, 20, for 50 um, by 2020. Um, so essentially, um, in terms of carbon reduction, you will deliver much more if you focus on heat as opposed to electricity because the carbon associated with your electricity is coming down. So the carbon savings that you can achieve um, will always will be reducing at the same time. Um, in terms of the Scottish emissions factor, I know that the Scottish Government are looking at whether Scottish institutions are going to be allowed to use a Scottish factor in reporting going forward, which is um, obviously be a big help. <laughs> if that's possible. And the other um, thing that's quite complicated in terms of electricity is our green tariffs um, and uh, PPAs. Um, at the moment, because these are almost always not additional um, green electricity, you are not allowed to apply a, a zero emissions factor to them in your reporting. So um, I would suggest that they are not. it's not worth paying additional um, money for green tariffs. You'd be better to um, use those funds for um, demand reduction and energy efficiency projects at this point. Um, then for business travel, um, so here it's some, obviously it's a much smaller source of emissions for you generally, but some things that you could consider are obviously reducing demand, continuing to promote uh, virtual meetings um, on the back of all the changes that have been necessitated um, through COVID. Um, you could also incentivize lower carbon travel options. Um, for example, the University of St Andrews has set up a central fund um, for staff to pay for rail travels, but if they want to fly to their meeting, they have to pay for that flight out to their own um, project budgets. Um, you could commit to cap and reduce mileage in non-hybrid um, or electric vehicles. Um, Zero Waste Scotland have done that um, to discourage um, driving in free fleet. Um, I think they've set a cap of like 20% uh, a, a year. Um, I've, I've linked to their report further on this. So, so if you're interested in that, you can um, you can investigate for more details. Um, more radically, you could also think about implementing no-fly zones. Um, Zero Waste Scotland are quite progressive. So um, in 2019-18, they banned domestic flights. Um, and last year, they extended that um, to cover Paris, Belgium, Netherlands and Luxembourg. Um, and I know that some institutions are thinking about going down this route um, as well. So, uh, you know, so that's uh, another option to consider. Um, then Matt briefly mentioned offsetting. Um, so when you are at the point of considering offsetting, some key things to think about are obviously that um, reducing emissions must always be your priority. Um, you need to establish, or, and this is again something that we could probably do as a group, um, robust principles about which emissions can be offset. Um, the COP26 Universities Network recently published a, brief, you know, an off, a briefing paper on offsetting, and they suggest um, that really only we should only be thinking about offsetting flights um, because um, everything else should be reduced. Um, then I, I mentioned about Edinburgh, so you do have this option of um, sequestering emissions within your own estate, for example, if you're able to plant trees. 
Um, and but if you were looking to purchase offsets, those must be high quality and additional. Sorry, I meant to link to a um, video. Scott wrote a briefing paper on this, and he's got a wee video um, on offsetting, which I will add to this before I circulate uh, the slides at the end. Um, and again, we're expecting further guidance on offsetting from the Scottish government in um, in April. Um, they, they've indicated that they are not that keen on international offsets, which. Um, tend to be cheaper. Um, it, yeah, in terms of price, the price of offsetting varies drastically. Um, there's more information. We, we actually had an EUC wide um, webinar on it last week. Um, but yeah, it, it, it really does. I, I think at the minute, most um, offsets are less than $10 per tonne of CO2, but um, it can go up um, you know, to like 100. <laughs> Somebody mentioned 900. <laughs> Um, in the meeting, which is, is quite shocking. Um, and lastly, here are the exemplars I mentioned. So zero is Scotland, um, our path to net zero is really, it's really interesting, it's really progressive, but obviously they're a much smaller organization than we are. So um, not all these options might be appropriate. Um, University of Edinburgh has got a zero by 2040 climate strategy. They're, um, looking to um, planning missions removals within their estate rather than offsetting. Edinburgh Napier University has got net zero carbon by 2030. They're aligning with the City of Edinburgh Council. Um, and Jamie spoke about at the last forum about how he had got agreement from senior leaders on that target, which is really interesting. Um, and University of Aberdeen, um, net zero, uh, they're going for 2040 in their carbon strategy zone. That's a science-based target. I think they're possibly the first Scottish institution to go down that route. 